In July 1970, International Harvester made a strategic move that most people have never heard about. They purchased a 52% controlling interest in a French company called Seacam, manufacturers of hydraulic excavators under the brand name Yumbo. The name came from a local town near one of their manufacturing facilities. This acquisition marked International Harvester's entry into the hydraulic excavator business, a booming industry that was revolutionizing earth-moving work around the world. But the story of Yumbo goes much deeper than just another corporate acquisition. It's the story of quiet innovation, international competition, and machines that helped shape modern construction, often without anyone realizing it. The Yumbo Company was formed around 1954, based on worldwide patent rights for a revolutionary hydraulic excavator design. But the technology itself predates the company by several years. In 1948, two Italian brothers, Carlo and Mario Bruneri, developed a wheeled prototype that would change everything. This was, according to machinery history aficionados, the first fully hydraulic excavator ever built. Unlike the cable and winch-operated machines that dominated the industry, this new design used hydraulic pumps and cylinders to transmit digging power. Seacam recognized the potential and bought the patent rights from the Brunery brothers in 1954. Their initial production model was a truck-mounted excavator called the S25. Now, some historians argue that the Gradle, built in Ohio in 1941, was actually the first hydraulic excavator. The Gradle was indeed hydraulically operated and mounted on a truck, but it worked differently than the Yumbo, with a boom that moved in and out rather than the full hydraulic system of the Brunery design. Highway departments across America used Gradles extensively for road work. What made Yumbo truly revolutionary was what came next. In 1956, they developed the model H24, the first self-propelled hydraulic excavator. This rubber-tired machine freed operators from needing a truck chassis. The following year, in 1957, Yumbo introduced the model Y500, weighing 19 tons. This was the biggest hydraulic excavator in existence at that time, and it ran on tracks rather than wheels. This was a significant milestone in the industry, but here's what really set Yumbo apart from the competition. Their machines could rotate a full 360 degrees, starting in 1954. This might not sound like much today, but it was groundbreaking at the time. To understand how significant this was, consider that Poclan, another French company, had produced one of the first hydraulic excavators called the TU back in 1951. The Pokelan TU represented a major departure from cable and winch systems using hydraulic pumps and cylinders instead. However, the TU couldn't rotate a full 360 degrees. Pokelan didn't introduce full rotation capability in their machines until 1960, six years after Yumbo. The 1950s and 60s saw the hydraulic excavator market heat up dramatically. Around 1958, Lieber, a German company whose principal business was cranes, started building hydraulic excavators on both tracks and rubber tires. Even though Yumbo was already established in the market, Lieber was a large company with a reputation for quality machines. They took significant business away from Yumbo, and hydraulic excavators eventually became Lieber's second major product line. Meanwhile, in the United States, a company called Hydraulic Machinery Company of Milwaukee in Wisconsin was producing the Hi Ho in the late 1950s. These track hoes used a three cylinder Detroit diesel engine, but only had 270 degrees of rotation, not the full 360 that Yumbo offered. Interestingly, this is likely where American contractors started calling hydraulic excavators track hoes, a term that's much easier to pronounce and still widely used today. When International Harvester acquired their controlling interest in 1970, they gained access to two substantial manufacturing facilities. The plant at Genus sat on 57 acres with 122,000 square feet of manufacturing and assembly floor space under roof. It employed 284 people, and the primary product was the 3980 excavator. This facility handled excavation assembly, welding of attachments, pipe bending, supporting machining and prototype manufacturing. 
The other plant was located in the town of Chauffail, about 75 miles northeast of Genas. This was actually the oldest Yumbo manufacturing facility. It comprised five buildings divided by a public road located on six acres containing 127,000 square feet of manufacturing and assembly floor space. This plant employed 300 people and focused on welding and machining of platforms, booms, lift areas and the superstructure to support operations at Genus. This was where the larger excavators were primarily produced. Between the two plants, Yumbo was producing about four hydraulic excavators per day in different sizes. In 1971, three Yumbo models entered the United States market. The 3940, 3960 and 3960R. The R unit featured a rubber-tired undercarriage. The 3940 was a 5 8 yard machine powered by a four-cylinder diesel with 62 horsepower. The 60 and 60R were 7 8 yard machines powered by 100 horsepower Deutz air-cooled diesel engines. They were offered with two different booms. The S boom for push-shovel type jobs and the L-boom which worked like a typical backhoe. The only bucket size available was 0.8 yards. In October 1972, Yumbo released the larger 3980, a 17-ton crawler machine fitted with a variable displacement pump. The following year, 1973, saw the 3960 replaced by the 3964, which featured a 358 cubic inch international diesel. This model had larger hydraulic pumps, extra rollers on the undercarriage, and piston drive swing motors instead of gear drive. In 1974, the model 3980 was replaced by the 3984, a 20-ton machine. It used the same motor as the 3964, but was turned up to 110 horsepower. This machine featured lifetime sealed track rollers and idlers, longer reach, joystick controls, and faster cycle time. A prototype model 3994, a 32-ton machine, was built and displayed at the Expermat in Paris, France. Whether any of these machines ever made it to the United States remains unknown. It wasn't until 1978 that the 3960R was updated to the 3965B rubber-tired model. This version included all the latest updates, most notably joystick controls instead of the many levers previously required to move the boom. This was a significant ergonomic improvement for operators. The crawler excavators also received updates in 1978, being redesignated as the 630, 640 and 650 models. These new models ranged from 75 horsepower and 32,000 pounds to 120 horsepower and 70,000 pounds. All the redesigned units were powered by International's DT diesel engines. International Harvester wasn't alone in recognizing the potential of hydraulic excavators. John Deere entered the business in 1969, Komatsu in 1968, and Caterpillar in 1972. All of these major manufacturers got into the excavator business around the same time because of surging demand for these machines. Throughout the 1980s and into the 1990s, Japanese manufacturers like Komatsu appeared to have better and faster machines, and many thought they would dominate the market. However, by the 2000s, the playing field had leveled. According to industry professionals, all three major brands became pretty similar in capability and performance, with John Deere holding a slight edge in market share. In 1982, International Harvester sold Yumbo back to its employees. The company continued selling excavators throughout Europe, and many models were now sold as dresser machines. In the 1990s, Yumbo began building excavators for a Japanese company called Furukawa. Here's an interesting detail about branding. All Yumbo hydraulic excavators that came to the United States carried only international emblems, with no Yumbo branding visible. This raises the question of whether the Yumbos sold in Europe retained the Yumbo name cast into the counterweight on the back of the machines, or if they too were rebranded. The story of Yumbo excavators represents a fascinating chapter in construction equipment history. From the Brunery brothers' innovation in 1948 to International Harvester's involvement in the 1970s and 80s, 
These machines were part of a revolution that transformed earth-moving work forever. While Yumbo may not be a household name today, their contributions to hydraulic excavator development were significant. They were early innovators in full 360-degree rotation, self-propelled designs, and the transition from cable systems to full hydraulic power. Today, hydraulic excavators are ubiquitous on construction sites worldwide, but few people know about the French company that helped pioneer the technology. The next time you see a track hoe on a job site, remember that its design lineage traces back through decades of innovation by companies like Yumbo, who dared to reimagine what earth-moving equipment could be.